And welcome to another Piston pregame show right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Uh, big game tonight going on against the Bucks. My name is Stick. I got my man Corey to my right. What's going on? What's going on? And then to my left. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> hey, man, look. I, I hey. feel like I have a deja vu from this morning. You, you know what? It's cool, you know. Cause you know me and me and Stick got on the sweet sport coach and I'm Joey's jealous. over there. So <laughs> hey, if you, if you if you can't beat me, you gotta hate me. Uh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not hating on you. The only one that I'm hating on are the Bucks because I'm sick of losing to the Bucks. <laughs> I feel like we play them every game. This is like the 17th game against the Bucks this season. Uh, so let's get into it. I mean, that's the matchup for tonight. The Bucks are seven and four. The Pistons are two and eight. And Joey and I were talking before this. Without us, the Bucks are only a five and four team. Yeah, they're not looking as dominant as they've looked the past couple of years. They look very beatable. I don't know if that's due to the bubble. Well, not the bubble. COVID, the no lack fans. Of bubble. No lack of bubble. No COVID. Um, with no fans because of COVID. I don't know what's going on. Right. Um, and speaking of COVID, this might be the last game tonight that the Pistons play until Saturday because I wouldn't be surprised if the game on Friday gets canceled because tonight the Wizards and the uh, Atlanta game is getting uh, canceled. Really? So that's all due to COVID. The Wizards don't have enough to meet the eight player minimum. So there's that many that were in contact or who knows what. It's like a bad beer league team when your guys don't show up for kickball. It's like, oh, you guys don't have enough to play. So you're not playing. You know what be sweet? If this year they just called in fans to come play. Would you play? 100%. <laughs> of course you would. That'd be so awesome. Uh, so the Pistons, uh, they're the underdogs by 10.5 points uh, tonight. In the previous games, they've lost by 125-115 and 130-115. So by 10 points and then by 15 points. So it only is getting worse. Uh, yeah, we're trending the wrong way <laughs> on, on that for sure. So Vegas has us uh, l losing by 10.5. How do you guys feel about that? I mean, you look at the last couple of games. I, at first, I was like, oh, no, we're going to beat those odds. But we're, we're still <laughs> seeing the same odds pretty much. And you said it. We lost by 10 the first. 15 the second. Well, it was funny. The first time we played them, it was around a 10 and a half point spread. Then the second time we played them, it took it down to about an eight point spread. But now, I guess it's back up there, Corey. I got to agree with the spread. It's We're not looking good against the Bucks. Giannis and those guys are just having their way with us. And it's... I'm not, I'm not feeling that positive about tonight. Not going to lie. And then we, uh, of course, got to get into some key injuries for tonight. Obviously, Killian Hayes is out for we don't know. Yeah, well, that's kind of like the big old question mark elephant in the room. The number seven pick elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah, big elephant in the room. <laughs> so We have the best doctors in all of medical world. And we can't even find out a good evaluation <laughs> on his status. That's what's blowing my <laughs> mind because at least give us a time frame. And like I said, just give me the worst time frame. Tell me he's out for the next like three years and then we can walk <laughs> it back from there and I'll feel good about it. If it's like, oh, he's out for four weeks and then all of a sudden it turns into four months. But don't be Governor Whitmer. That's what Stoke <laughs> is saying. I will say this. The fact that they are not saying anything like they made that one statement and then went radio is silent. That is very concerning. It is concerning. That that leads me to believe it's the more severe. Yes. Um, and we got intern Alex here doing the producer. Uh, Alex, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. You're good. And hey, you got to stand up. Show off that beautiful yeah, sweatshirt. You yeah. Got. Flex that. Man, what? that thing is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex, so you said you got some trivia questions for us. Do you want to do those now or later in the show? We'll do it after your guys' keys. Okay, after our keys so, to cause, victory. Because it kind of goes in hand-in-hand uh, -hand with uh, Joey's key about Mason Plumley. Oh, okay. nice. nice. Okay. All right, I he like knows, that. He knows the keys because he was the one that had to make all the graphics. Yeah. Whatnot, so. yeah. Um, so, so let's, hope, let's hope get into our key. enjoying the graphics. <laughs> let's get into our key matchup of tonight, which for the Pistons, I mean, we got one guy that we can highlight pretty much every game, and that's Jeremy Grant. Oh, you were, it's not Blake Griffin? Uh, not this game, oh, no. Surprise. <laughs> Definitely. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and the other opposing player, former Piston, Chris Middleton. So this is the matchup that we're going to be looking forward to seeing. Um, obviously, the leading scorer for the Pistons is Jeremy Grant, 25.1 uh, points a game. He's just having a great season all the way around. 6.2 rebounds, 2 assists a game, and a block. And he scored more points than any Piston in their first 10 games. Ever? Ever. Wow. All right. Yeah, he was at uh, 251. 
Yeah, the only, I mean, I guess the only one I could really think of to do that to like come in in the last like twenty some odd years would be Grant Hill. That's probably the only guy that would have thought put up more numbers. That's yeah, crazy. Believe, that's only twenty five point one points a game. Yeah, but that's still damn good. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Jeremy Grant, and then it went to uh, Adrian Dantley, and then I believe Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> Adrian Dantley, the oh. teacher. But man, that was that was such a drama when he was a Detroit Piston. The whole Mark Aguirre, Adrian Dantley, Isaiah Thomas. We can get into that Yo, a whole good. other time. Uh, but yeah, Jeremy Grant is our key matchup. And like I said, he's going up against Chris Middleton. And Middleton doesn't lead their team in scoring. That's Giannis with 26. But Middleton's still coming in at 22 points. He's still a problem. He's, the thing is, he's not scoring a lot of points, you know, as opposed to Giannis. But he's efficient. Efficient. Yeah, when he take when he scores, it's like it's he's not just jacking up a lot of shots and he's not scoring outside of the rhythm of the offense. So, gotta gotta watch out. Well, and he's guy. leading their team in assists with almost six assists a game. So, I mean, Middleton is one of those guys we bailed on early, and he turned out to be a pretty damn good player. But I mean, you look at Jeremy Grant, and you said what's the average this year for his points? Twenty five point one. Yeah. Twenty five. I mean, he's averaging more in the series with the Bucks because he put up 24 last Monday in the first game. Yep. And then he put 31 up Wednesday of last week. So the thing that I'm thinking is just that the Bucks are scoring so many points that it's just hard for us to keep up. And that's that's the name of the game. Score more points <laughs> more than your opponents. Than so <laughs> and they're doing a good job of it, yeah. especially against us. And like I said, you know, without us, they're a five and four team. With us, seven and four looks a lot better. So if we could steal one from them tonight, I I would absolutely love that. I, w I would hope so. This would be the this would be the game to steal it. I mean, because I think the Bucks the thing is getting out to a slow start. So if we don't get them right now. We're never gonna. Get yeah. Them. Um. Do you think Jeremy Grant is gonna outscore Chris Middleton today? If you're a betting man, I'll yes. take that bet. I'll, I'll take, take that bet. Yeah. I'll take that. Okay, like Joe, I'm margin. trying to see how much he had in the in the previous matchups yeah, with us. I mean, he's outscored him in both games. Jeremy Grant's outscored yeah, Middleton. Middleton had 23 in the last game and then 19 in the first game. Okay, I got so something about by a lot. Now I got something for you about Jeremy Grant. All right, let's hear it. Now it's not points per game, just total points. Out of the top 15 players in the league, where do you think he ranks? Total points. Total points. Because he hasn't taken a night off. He hasn't done any rest, so that makes up some. Um, wait, say it again. I'd, I'd put him oh, oh. top five. He's and wait, top five scores in the NBA. Yeah, total points. Total points. Wow. Yep. He's 14th at 250 at the 251. Okay. And that's after a couple of games that passed. So of course, it was going to change. But um, after the game, after that game that they lost to the Jazz, he was seventh in total points. Wow. Wow. And then some c games were played yeah, after that. So at down. the end of their last game, game, he was in seventh, which you can see. I mean, he's been a consistent scorer and he doesn't take nights off. A lot of the big scorers in the league, even though like the Steph Curry scores 60 points in one yep. game, he doesn't play the next one. Now your average is 30. It's not that hard. Exactly. See, but most teams played what? About 10, 10 or so games this season? Uh, something like that. The Pistons have played 17 games against just the Bucks alone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you guys want to get into our three keys for the game? Oh, yeah. I definitely want to get into mine. All right, Corey, you hit yours first, and we'll commentate on them. All right, so my first key, score more than 115 points. In the, <laughs> I thought in you were going to say score more points than the Bucks. <laughs> no, not more, great points key. The, not more points than the Bucks. Score more than 115 than their last two losses to the Bucks. They've scored exactly 115 points. Oh, yep. wow. I didn't realize that. Yep. Yeah, 125, so, 115, and 130, 115. Wow. So they should just aim to score a little bit more of that. They'll be in, they'll be in good shape. <laughs> it should help. Second key, I've been saying it over and over and over. Protect the damn perimeter. Teams are shooting close to 40%. Right now, they're shooting 38% against the Pistons from beyond the arc. They are they are still one of the worst teams in the league, closing out on defenders and deflections. They're just letting guys get open shots. So, and the thing is, the Bucks they're like second in the league in three-point shooting. Yeah. So, close that, out, close, close out, out, close, close out. out. <laughs> yep. And Hand down, man down. <laughs> and the last one, we've already kind of touched on it in, the, in our key matchups. Stop Chris Middleton. You're not going to... We, we, we've had the pipe dream of stopping Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's not going to happen. The Greek freak is, is as advertised. So next up is Chris Middleton. If you can just go ahead and limit him, frustrate him, right. make him take tougher shots because right. 
One game he was seven for ten. The other game he was nine for fifteen. He, he, that's too efficient. You got to disrupt to make him uncomfortable. So those are my keys. You get those guys. You, you get, go with those. They should be in good shape. I like that. Hey, I man. like that. Um, so we're going to do your trivia after Joey. So I'll do mine right now so we can do Joey's and lead right into that. Uh, my three keys to victory. First, limit the role players of the Bucks. Similar to Chris Middleton, even though he's semi-star on the team. Limit everybody else. DiVincenzo, <laughs> no buckets for you tonight. Not one. None. My favorite is Stick started out game one. Limit Giannis. <laughs> he switched to game two. Limit Middleton. <laughs> now just somebody. <laughs> limit somebody. That's that's about, all I'm asking for tonight. Uh, how about we just, you know, somebody just locked him inside the car. I'll take that. that. I'll take that. Right. Uh, number Why two. COVID hit that? No, 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 Joey, no, Joey, no, Joey. My bad. No, we apologize on the behalf yeah. of Woodward Sports. I'm sorry. Uh, but but got, for real, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and do it. I mean, listen, they need eight <laughs> players to play the game. So just say they get rid of Giannis. They get rid of Middleton. We're just false shape. tests. You want We're, false positives. Exactly. There you go. Close okay. contact, but don't test positive. I don't endorse any of that's this shit right, right now. That's, that's what I'm <laughs> Uh, my second, limit the runs. Like, we've seen in this game that we've gotten up on the Bucks, and then we've given that away. And we've gone up on teams, and we've given it away. And teams have gotten up on us, and we tried to climb back in. So limit the this, play more like this, and we'll have a better chance of winning. And in those two wins that they've had, they've done that. Yeah, literally. And all the other ones, we gave up a big <laughs> lead or just got our ass whooped. Yeah, out. and then... I can't believe we haven't mentioned this. Like, we should have started the show off with this I is know the Isaiah going. Stewart versus Giannis Brawl Part 2. Wow. If you remember after the last game, Giannis and his punk-ass brother decided to roll up on Isaiah Stewart like they were some bosses. And they forgot. This is Detroit. This is not Greece. We don't do that shit here. And he pulled up on them, both of them, and Isaiah Stewart just stood there like, you ain't going to do anything. Like, you know... You know you know the feeling when the guy's all talk, he's running his mouth, he needs his little brother to come back him up. And Isaiah Stewart stood there, got in his face, under the MVP skin, and I want to see all of it tonight. Like, I want all the smoke tonight. I mean, we I are playing at Little Caesars Arena, so maybe Malice at the LCA? <laughs> <laughs> there's no John Green to throw the Damn, beer. There's no fans, you're right. Yes. <laughs> I will say this, I hope that he's the first sub off the bench, and he gets right in his grill immediately. If I'm Casey, I'm starting him tonight. Just to let him go out there, throw an elbow, get a quick foul, and come to the bench. Then we'll start the game. You like, know what? Get in there early. The lineup. You know not what? On it. That's a better idea. Yeah. yeah. Because because right now, what do you have to lose? Exactly. You already seen that you can get under the MVP skin. So why not use that to your advantage? The only way you're going to get this guy off his game is to get him off his game. And that's getting in his head and being physical with him. So the fact that Stewart got in both the Ancanta Pupo's heads. <laughs> that was not bad. I tried. No, no, that I was tried. really good. I love, nobody even says his last no. name anymore. It's just Giannis. Yes. So. And you can't even spell his first name. Anta right? Pupo, I believe, is his name. <laughs> but uh, go ahead, Joey. What are your three keys to a Piston victory tonight? So my first is get the damn board. All right. We are one of the worst rebounding teams in the NBA. It's crazy because we have some of the best offensive rebounders in the NBA. But we're going against the Bucks, who is the number one rebounding team in the league. So that's a big one for us. Let's see it, Mason Plumley. The second one, start off well, because against the Jazz in the last game on Sunday, they started the game off 9-0 run. Right. And we can't let that happen. Right. Yeah, it's tough to come back from that, man. Like, you saw it over the weekend in the NFL, and you saw it last game, too. Yeah. And then, to top off Isaiah Stewart yeah. and going hard... I'm going to go with the other big man. We need Plumlee to ball out because he has not been performing the greatest in the Bucks series. Dude, he had the game. He had first game. He almost got that triple-double. We were like, oh, my God. Mason yep. Plumlee's going to be a triple-double machine for the Pistons. <laughs> eh, not so much. We need to slow down on that. Yeah, talk. and he's only put, he only put up, what, four points in one of the games versus, versus them? It's like, come on. It, it's a lot to guard Giannis, but, yeah, he's, he's definitely got to show up tonight. But hopefully Isaiah Stewart can help him out. You're right. Elbow or something <laughs> like that. And to Joey's point, the Pistons right now are seventh in the league on off offensive rebounds per game with 11.1. So 
That's that's the thing that's crazy is you don't get as many offensive rebounds as you do defensive rebounds. So even if you're going to be number one, you still could be, like the Pistons, yeah. the worst rebounding team. Offensive rebounds are kind of like a ghost stat because yeah. that means you're missing a lot of shots too. So it, it kinda, like, I kind of take that stat with a grain of salt. So, you never want to lead the league in offense. You want one player that's leading the league in offensive rebounds. Exactly. But you, you don't, don't want the whole team. damn team. <laughs> right. You know, when Ben Wallace used to do it back in the day, it was great. But... At the end of the day, you don't want that many offensive rebounds available. Period. Yeah. And even then, I want to. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna have this fact next time because I want to see off of all them offensive rebounds. Where do we lead in putbacks? Yeah, that's that's a good stat too. We'll that's find really that out. One. Because Alex, you got trivia for us. What you got, man? Yeah, I can tell you're excited, Stick. Well, you told Wednesday me you got trivia. Night trivia. Let's yeah. do this. It's a couple quick questions, and Joey might get this first one because he probably has Mason Plumley stats up on that, <laughs> on that tablet right now. Season, but season I won't look though. <laughs> okay. First question is: Out of the ten games the Pistons have played, how many games does Mason Plumley Plumley have double-digit scoring? Ooh, I'm gonna say Joey. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> it's not Family Feud. <laughs> I'm gonna say. One? One, okay. I'm going to say six. Six? I'm going five. Five? The We're all wrong. Is actually three. Three? Ooh. Oh, all right. Ooh. Joey was closest without yeah. going over. Oh, yeah. Price yeah. <laughs> <There we laughs> okay. is right rules. <laughs> <laughs> Who we got okay. next, Alex? Next question is about Jeremy Grant. Um, minutes per game. Is he higher or lower than 10th in the entire NBA? Ooh, I know he's at 37 minutes a game. And that's that's a lot of minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah he plays the most minutes on the team by yeah. by far. So How many in a game? that top what, ten in the NBA? Minutes? That's the question. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that top ten in the NBA. I, I'm gonna say yes as well because especially this year with how many games, yeah. a lot of people are playing taking rest. So I'm gonna go with yes on that. Mm, Corey, I'm gonna go right under tenth. I'm probably gonna go somewhere like eleventh or twelfth. He's actually fifth in the league with yeah. Oh, six All minutes right. per game. There you Iron go. Man most for the minutes, Pistons. Most points. All right, and you said you got one more, or was that no, it? That, that was it, sorry. All right, those are great, man. I like yeah. those. Keep the trivia coming. Oh, yeah, as as sure. you can tell, I love trivia. So. <laughs> <laughs> he um, sucks at it, though. What? I <laughs> crush it at trivia. Real trivia, though. Yeah, yeah, real trivia. I, I have a bunch of useless knowledge up here that's for good for nothing <laughs> but trivia. Literally. That's all it's good for. <laughs> So anytime I'm down to play trivia anywhere, let's do it. Uh, so you guys want to get into our game predictions for tonight? Yep. Uh, like I said, the Pistons are underdogs by 10 and a half. Joey, what do you think the final score is going to be? And do you think the Pistons will cover? I think they will. Okay. Uh, well, actually, no, not, not the cover. I think the Pistons will win. Well, then they cover. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. I'm always so bad with these spreads. <laughs> but I think the Pistons are going to come out on top. I mean, we've lost twice to them. And hopefully they don't hit the 115 uh, point mark that <laughs> Corey is cursed by. But uh, I think the Pistons are gonna pass that with 123 tonight. Okay. Versus Bucks 119. 123, 119. So up by four. Okay, I like that. I like it. I mean, it is tough to beat a team three times in a row. Uh, Corey, what is your final prediction for tonight's game? Woo! I'm going to go 120, 110, Bucks. 121, so we're getting lows by 10. So, ooh, you, they're, they're not covering though. Nah, and they man. didn't take your key. Yeah, 115 points. They're not. I don't. I don't. I don't think they're gonna get it done. Really? Yeah, I, I think that right now they have too many things to figure out with their offense and their rotation. And the Bucks is the wrong team right now to figure that out against. To learn against. Yeah. yeah. I mean that that game against the Suns, they were this close and they looked so good against it. The Jazz. Eh, not so much. You hope that fight carries over from Isaiah Stewart and gets puts some energy in him tonight. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out on a limb, man. I'm going to take the Pistons to win tonight. I'm going to say they're going to score 120 to about 109. Pistons by 11. And those are all based on free throws down the stretch. Like, they're okay. going to be up by five, but then go up by 11 within the past the last two minutes and, of the and game. And this series, you have taken the Bucks to beat the Pistons both times, correct? I have. Yep. Okay. I so try to be smart might, about the truth. Things. I don't. I just every single time I want my team to win. <laughs> and those, I know. And those free throws down the stretch, I hope hopefully it's in Jeremy Grant's hands. He's one of the team's better free throw shooters. Yep. Um, last time I checked, he was shooting close to around 88%. Wow. Somewhere around that margin. So I'm with it. And before we get to the game, we got to talk about the NBA and switching up some of the protocol for uh, COVID. We're going to see some weird things tonight. Like no, they're not allowed to give DAP after they shoot a free throw. 
It's uh, you can walk up, but you can't give him high five. Smack the dude's ass. Yeah, I don't know. Is, was ass? I think that's allowed. No, that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> that's always allowed. Um, they do as long as he's facing the other direction. Right? right, and we know that since the Bucks are on the road, they can no longer have outside visitors visit them in the hotel when they're on the road, which um, should make them kind of angry at some points, frustrated. Hey, maybe they maybe they um get frustrated they can't get none. Right. Then, you know, they, <laughs> That's the none. key to the game. Since the Bucks didn't get any hoes last night, yep. they're gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with the key to victory. <laughs> that is the major key to victory tonight is that the Bucks could not get chicks in their hotel room. Last hey, night. plot twist to this whole thing. The wives of the NBA players are the ones that put, this, that put this in there. They put this in there. <laughs> so like, now all NBA players are loyal. This is a great season. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, the NBA is trying to take care of their COVID situation. We don't know if they're going to end up finishing the season, if they're going to go back to a bubble like they did. It's all up in the air right now. So just enjoy Pistons basketball while we have it. We got a young team that's working hard every game. And you can see them growing, at least in their hunger. Like, that's the one thing I've been impressed with, that even though they've lost so many games, or 2-8, and eight, they, they still fight every game. So that means they haven't given up on themselves or the season. So I love that about Detroit basketball. And I saw Coach Casey talking about the whole starting lineup because we still really don't know what the starting lineup is. And Coach Casey's openly admitting. He's like, yeah, we're going to try new things. So right. that's why we might see something different tonight. Yep. Um, I want to get into that whole, but you know the whole thing with the Bucks, and then not the Bucks with the Wizards. With the Wizards, because that, that's the next game. Yeah, that's they, our game on Friday. I don't think we're gonna play that game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I mean, it's like, who knows when the next thing is because they they have all the positive tests and all these games they didn't cancel one by one. So yeah, that's why I'm saying enjoy it's, the basketball it's, it's, while we got. It's it. just I'm over here just trying to see more stuff and look at these rules and it's like that doesn't make sense <laughs> you can't bump hands you can't they're shortening practices but it's okay for these guys to go out and go play a game right it, face it, to face all over everybody hey, <laughs> it's man, crazy you got to do your best but you still got to make that money that's what it's all about in the end and the nba will roll on just like the nfl made it through the season the ncaa made it through the season so hopefully these guys get through it um, it's, I'm looking forward to the game tonight because, like you said, it may be the last game we see for a very long time. Uh, enjoy the Pistons versus Bucks tonight. That's your Pistons pregame show. My name is Stick. It's Corey. And it's Joey. With Alex, Alex. Alex, yeah. <laughs> and Art's behind you. Art snuck in. Hi, Art. <laughs> I never leave. <laughs> I never leave. Uh, you guys have a great night. Enjoy the game.